Hello guys, uh, Dan here, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video I'm going to show you how to paint a cutter in this alternate skin version. Uh, I was browsing internet a couple of days ago looking for some inspiration how to paint this model because I didn't want them uh, to paint it in the default paint scheme and then I found uh, this paint scheme from the Tony Shao uh, sorry man if I butchered your name and I really like this paint scheme because it reminds me so much on Gundam Jesta and some Macros uh, VFS uh, so I decided to give it a try so without further ado let's start I primed the model uh, with a dark grey uh, if you don't have this specific color from Vallejo, you can use any dark grey or even black if you want. Try to apply this paint in the few uh, thin layers, uh, because this will be our default paint uh, for the armor. I will then use uh, blue-green and uh, I will paint uh, all this uh, under armor uh, that he have. Actually, there is not that many surfaces, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm going to paint uh, all of them very carefully. Uh, but in any part of this video, uh, if I make uh, any mistakes uh, while painting, while going over the panels that I'm not painting, I will just go back to my uh, dark grey and I will just repaint them, since this is my base color and it will be very easy to do the fixes. And because of that, I will highlight the grey armor at the end. Now let's go back to these uh, blue-green panels. I will use a blue tone uh, from the Army Painter. Uh, if you don't have this wash, uh, you can use any blue wash or even uh, Noon Oil or uh, Black wash uh, will do the job. And I will just carefully do a little heavier wash here uh, because the recesses are really deep uh, and I want uh, them to pop up and to be visible. So I will do a proper wash and then leave everything to uh, completely dry for like 20 to 25 minutes. And then after everything uh, is completely dried, I will go back to the blue-green and uh, I will just uh, return the top of these uh, panels and the most raised areas to the previous color. Uh, in the same time, this will be my one and only highlight on this, uh, because this surface is uh, very small and uh, when I uh, highlight everything else, it will totally blend in, uh, so we don't actually need to do that much work uh, on this part. For the next step, uh, I decided uh, to paint uh, some sections of these armor panels in the blue color. Uh, so for this I will use a flat blue. And I have to say that this paint is really good and have a really good coverage. And uh, since we are painting over the gray surface, uh, I only had to apply this in uh, one uh, very thin coat. And uh, I had a uh, good coverage. If you still can see some grey protruding from down on your blue, you can go and apply the second thin coat uh, and uh, you will have a good coverage. Here you can see like uh, what outlines I blocked with this paint, uh, so that you can copy the same pattern if you like. And uh, since we are working with the flat armor panels, uh, there is no point actually in doing any wash. Uh, so I will just uh, proceed directly uh, to highlight. I will use a light sea blue and uh, I will do an uh, edge highlight of uh, all these uh, armor panels that I painted blue. I will try to use a side of my brush as much as possible and draw uh, very thin lines. Uh, whenever that is not possible, I will try to use just the tip of my brush and uh, try to draw a very thin lines. Uh, if you make any mistake or your lines are too thick uh, or too smudgy, uh, just go back to the flat blue and repair it. So 
So for the next step, uh, I will apply some orange paint just to create some uh, contrast and diversity in the armors. Uh, but uh, it will be very difficult to paint orange on top of uh, gray or uh, dark black. Uh, so for this case, I will have to first uh, base paint uh, uh, with a mix of uh, cavalry brown and uh, orange brown. So I made like a slightly 50-50 mix. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly 50-50 if you make like a 60-40, it's not a big deal. Uh, I just want to apply the first layer of this paint and outline the areas that uh, I want to paint orange. So when I start painting uh, the next layers, it will be very easy to apply them and uh, I will uh, have a good uh, tone of the paint. Here you can see that I'm trying to paint like some lights in these recesses. Uh, so at this moment it looks really like a brownish. Uh, but in the next step, uh, when I start using the pure uh, orange brown, I will go all over the same areas again, and this time uh, with the pure color as well in a one or two very thin coats, so that I start uh, having a little more orangey color. As you can see now the armor panels look a little more orange and you're not able to see any gray from under it. And uh, for the final layer I will use a scrofulous brown and uh, I will apply this as my final orange color that will be uh, one step before I start highlighting it. Uh, so for this step uh, you can actually paint let's say between 80 to 90 percent of the surfaces that we painted with the previous color and try to focus on the raised areas more so if you have to paint something that's under or that's in shadow uh, try to leave it uh, with the previous layer as well for these uh, lights uh, in the recesses uh, you don't need to go all the way, you can just paint like 80% of it, just a slight line, start from the middle and towards the edges. And for the final highlight on these parts, I will use uh, Ice Yellow, and this will create the effect of uh, glow or the glare. Uh, so wherever is possible, like uh, on the sharper armor panels, you do the edge highlights, while on all the other LEDs uh, you can just put uh, like uh, one dot in the middle, uh, like in his eyes uh, or on those uh, panels uh, on the side of his wings. Uh, for the next step, I decided uh, to make some armor panels on his leg a little different. So I used a different uh, shade of uh, grey. I actually used the basalt grey, which is a little lighter, and uh, just uh, tried to paint a few of these armor panels. Uh, they're like that. I noticed there are like two dark grey armor panels together. I wanted to make a difference between them, so I painted one uh, lighter. Uh, this is completely optional, and it will create uh, some effect uh, of the highlight and the shadows and. Uh, it is quite cool effect, but it's not necessary. As you can see, maybe on this light you won't be able to see a full potential of it and the big difference, but actually on the table you can see a little difference. And then I use the medium sea gray uh, to highlight both uh, gray colors of his armor panels. Uh, since there is a lot of sharp edges on this model, this was a really time-consuming part. 
but it was the best part uh, of painting this model because when I finished this uh, everything actually came uh, together. Uh, the thing is here uh, I will mostly focus on using the side of my brush and go against every single sharp edge that is grey on this model and I will draw uh, very thin lines. So wherever you see that it is possible to draw the line just do it. Uh, it is very time consuming I have to say again uh, but uh, it will really tie everything together and the model will start looking great after this step. Now it's time to start working on his gun. I decided uh, to paint uh, the front of the muzzles uh, just black. Uh, this was optional because I could leave it gray uh, but I wanted them to be a darker so at the end I decided it, uh, that it would be good uh, to paint it black and then after I highlighted it there was not actually a big difference uh, between the dark gray and the black uh, but I leave that up to you and then I decided uh, to put a little more colors uh, to the edges uh, so I pick up uh, this khaki paint uh, just to paint the frame of the gun uh, this paint have a very good coverage, so I had to apply only one thin coat and I was really satisfied with the result. And as well, I was uh, really careful here not to go inside the recesses. And uh, because I achieved that, uh, I was uh, not in need to use the wash for this. So you proceed straight uh, to highlight it after this. And for the highlight I pick up the same ice yellow that I used for the orange parts and I just did the edge highlight. Uh, this is a very light highlight uh, but it will outline and uh, give some good dimension uh, to the gun. Uh, for the barrel of the gun, I decided to use the color called smoke and this will give it like some kind of uh, like worn uh, rust effect uh, and it's really actually really nice color I have to say. Uh, so I applied this in uh, two very thin coats uh, because after the first coat uh, the paint was like slightly transparent. Uh, so I went there the second time and I had a nice and even coat uh, so I was happy with it. I use this only on the uh, on the barrel and uh, on some stuff on the side. And because I haven't uh, highlighted the gun with the medium C grave, I was highlighting the rest of the armor. I just had to make a break uh, from highlighting the gray. I went back and I just did the same edge highlight as I did on the rest of the armor. And to finalize uh, the barrel, I used the flat earth as my highlight. Uh, this is done uh, just as an edge highlight, uh, but I highlighted the same as I did before. So every single edge uh, where I was able to pull the line, I draw a little thin line. Uh, so this was like semi time consuming, uh, but it achieved a really good effect at the end. So I was like pretty happy how this uh, part of the gun turn out at the end. Finish up uh, with the model, uh, it's time to do some markings and the freehand. Uh, so I used my smallest brush with the best point that I have and I just used the pure white. Uh, so if you are scared of doing uh, freehand, like the best thing to start is to try to draw some straight lines. Uh, try it on the piece of paper uh, first couple of times and then start applying it on the model. 
uh, here you can see I just start drawing like some triangles and some straight lines uh, just to, to warm up my hand. Since we are working over the dark grey, don't be scared if you make any mistake. Just go back to the dark grey or to the flat blue in this case and just do a little repair, use it as an eraser. And then uh, I decided to put a few uh, red lines uh, on the model as well, just to create a little contrast between these lines. I pick up a gory red, uh, but this is totally optional, you can pick up any red that you have. Uh, just apply it in a few coats, uh, because if you go uh, over the blue panels, the paint will be slightly transparent and it will turn into a little purple. Uh, but after a few uh, very thin coats, it will uh, stay red. After I get the hang uh, of the li white lines, I decided to draw the, the number, number 2 on his chest. Uh, I decided to use like a digital number 2, uh, because it consists of the straight lines as well, so it was pretty easy to draw it. And uh, you will see at one moment uh, I made a few mistakes and the lines were too thick, so I went back to the dark grey and I just uh, fixed the thing, so until I was happy with the shape of it. And for the end, I decided to draw a Panoceania logo on his uh, right uh, shoulder. Uh, so, this required a few practice steps that I did on the paper, trying to draw like a perfect circle with my hand. And uh, after I was like happy, I was like, let me try to draw it on the shoulder. Uh, so, here you can see I made a completely white circle on the shoulder and then uh, I used the light sea blue and try to mark the two dots, the blue dots, and then try to draw the, the rest of the blue logo in between. Uh, so it was easy to paint this because you're going with the blue over the white, uh, so it totally like covered everything perfectly. Uh, only challenge was that the model was high and my hand was like most of the time floating in the air so I have to like try to be like really steady and really precise. But at the end uh, I was really satisfied how this logo turned out at the end. And uh, that's it, I already made the base for this model so I will just transfer it to it. Uh, if you're interested how, I will include a link in the description section down below where I exactly show you and explain how to make the base like this. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you find this paint scheme very interesting. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel, it will mean a lot to me and it will help this channel grow. And guys, uh, this is all for now, I wish you happy holidays if you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas to all of you, uh, stay safe, take care and uh, see you in the next video, bye bye!